Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to my channel, where I like to make audio narrations of various stories from across the internet. In this series we will be focusing on a web novel called There is no Epic Lucia, Only Puns, on the website Royal Road. And in this video we will be doing chapters 22, 24. As always, I hope that you enjoy. There is no Epic Lucia, Only Puns, Chapter 22. The Greenhouse Effect Delta took a moment as Amanda jumped up because of the new day. Until she had a clock or sent a hob or gob out to watch the sunrise, Delta just had no idea what time it really was. With a decent haul of 41 mana, Delta could really dig her teeth into some ideas, but she took a moment to sit down and just relax. There was a very real urge just to not think about what happened in the last day and keep building, upgrading, researching and absorbing. It was escapism and it came with a handy menu. Delta turned to her bathroom and just gave some company to Frown and Francois. Soise talked. Soise was bragging about the spider that he'd set on fire and Fran was laughing his little butt off when he listened. Delta smiled, happy that they were just doll-like creatures who stood around until there was time to kill. It made Delta care about them and feel better about just taking a break. If she just kept rushing blindly ahead, things could get worse in many ways. First the spiders, she said quietly to herself, as Fran began his own tale of the bacon explosion. Hob and Gob took their eggs, thinking that there were berries or such, and they had hatched and escaped, possibly telling the other spiders. Delta could see how that could look bad and even show Delta that attacks may be warranted out of fear of some need to protect the young. But there was something Swa and Quiss had let slip over the last day. Monsters were drawn to dungeons and Delta didn't really know why. Menu? Why do monsters attack dungeons? She asked, not sure to the extent that her aid's knowledge on the outside. I can only speak of the spiders that you have defeated. They were not feeling vengeful or furious, merely hungry. Even in a short time, the ambient manner in the air around them was less. If they had stayed long enough, they may have begun to devour your mana points. I suggest eradication of extreme measure upon the next visit. That was, well, for one, that's dark. Two, monsters, not my ones, but actual monsters feed of mana. Delta felt like someone had said that to her. I can only hypothesize on the events that transpired. Even the hatching spiders used their mana-rich air to hatch quicker. It was rather interesting timing of the spider hatchlings just as the goblins brought them into the dungeon. It would ask the guests now, as Rudy and Quiss, they have knowledge. Normally, I do not think this would work, but you are strange and do not operate on logic. It is vexing and it is interesting. Delta smiled and leaned against the dungeon wall. I try, thanks Nu, she said and stood as Bacon's eyes lit up as the lumen mushroom popped into existence. There's a handy little things were beginning to grow places as well. Unlike the unspeakable evil. They were super handy. Nu? Do you know, me, Nu, the name, everything? It's a coping mechanism for the fact that I have no mouth and must pun. Delta declared proudly, honestly was the best policy. Delta didn't want to pretend that the fact that she was a powerful, monster-making, magic-building dungeon didn't bother her. It was one of those things that lost an arm or a sense. This, this new existence was heavy and Delta could only unpack things one at a time. There was a lot that she had been forced to give up thinking on them before she was ready to deal with a good idea. But as long as she didn't lie to herself, she was good. She would find some peace one day. If something else didn't break her first. It had only been a few days after all, and Delta took it as a passing test of character that she was doing so well already. All right, now the people. She began to pace and felt better. Rudy Quist, Dio, Poppy, Aminster, and the supposedly whole town of people, how do those affect her? Well, so far there had been nothing but good experience. People had been nice, Dio had been funny, Rudy was awesome, and Quiz gave her a duck, indirectly. But there was a whole world out there. A whole world. Nu, no. what is this world called? She asked quietly. I do not know, you are my world. Delta spluttered and waved a hand at the screen. Nu, no, you can't just say things like that. She protested and the menu chimed in a low tone. Say what? 
My existence extends as far as your dungeon goes. I can only know the way things work and what happens in this gauntlet of uh, fun. Logically, you are the extent of my world knowledge, geographically, historically, and development and entertainment. Delta patted her cheeks, the action more real than her actual body part that she may have had. New was just so oblivious. New, you're a boy menu. She grumbled and the menu didn't respond, but simply grey box flashed and turned a perfect shade of blue that was to copy Quiss's coat. Match found, Quiss is male. I shall emulate his plumage if that is your desire. I do not have a vocal ability or a desire to match Dio. That is not what I... You know what? How about we just go spend some mana and see what we can improve? She offered and the menu opened up the various sections. Agreed. You must be the very best. Delta bit her tongue as the words instantly tried to slip out. A tune playing in her bet. La la la. Delta sweated as she effort to keep the menu went quiet. Torches, quickly, she commanded, and a new box appeared. Upgrades and purchases for torches. Upgrade simple wooden torches into stone scions. 10 DP. Allow torches to be relit after 30 minutes if in it condition to do so. 5 DP. Allow torches to become carryable by adventurers, 3 dp. Increase duration of torches' life when being carried, 2 dp. Add a copper decoration based near the base, 5 dp. Allow flame to be a natural blue, 3 mana. Well, a lot of this was for dp, and it made sense as dp was one-time purchases, and mana was the ability to reproduce the effect or item as many times as Delta could or wanted to do. All in all, Delta could easily split her menu into two sections. Purchasing for mana spending upgrades menus for her DP purchase. It had an odd feeling to spend DP quickly, outshining the mana in a short time that until Delta remembered one thing. She only had one level and there was only so many rooms. Having no monster slots left, Delta was basically wasting mana on small things which made it feel subpar. Delta shook her head, annoyed at herself. When the next floor came, she would be spending mana out of her rear to populate it with monsters and traps. It would become precious again. Then it would roughly decline as she hit her max monster cap and room cap, and then she would build up, get the next floor, and... Well, mana actually didn't seem so bad once Delta gave it some thought. She went to the grove and spent some mana on making more edible mushrooms. Delta smiled and she left the room. As time went on, more and more special rooms would appear, and they would take mana to make things. That was something that Delta was dismissing far too easily, simply because it was just mushrooms. Special loot, rare potions, it may all be much cheaper in these rooms. Following that thought, she opened the menu to the flat cost of summoning edible mushrooms. Four mana for the same amount if she used her menu, but only two if she grew it via the grove. Dungeon system, meet Delta's friend, her name is Breaking The. Delta tried to crackle, but the sword ended with a clearing of her throat. Until Quiss came back, Delta had no idea if more people would come adventuring. It was sad because Delta wanted to make coin purse with some coins, but something made her stop. It wasn't a video game. Monsters dropping endless money would destroy any economy in the long run. How did this kingdom have any currency if they used coins? Delta pondered for that moment. Maybe the dungeon coins had a tell. Maybe they just kept investing and building new towns and spread the money thin. Maybe people left it in chests in random places in the world that kept things in balance. Knew how different is the real money to money that I make. She wondered and knew appeared with a chime. Coins made by the dungeon are mostly perfect. That may be a tell. Another is that the mana level of the coin is new vanished and Delta felt a mild panic until the awareness of her life. Someone had just entered the dungeon. Delta turned and rushed to the entrance as a jolly woman whistled her way into the entrance hall. Hello, dearie. My, such a lovely scent already. I can tell that I'm going to like you. The woman laughed, her rosy cheeks making her look like she ran some dozens of tundra toy factory. Delta had Swan rushing over already, slowly by the fact that he had to open all the doors without burning them. Well, let's see. The woman read the signboards and put her hand on her cheek, a soft smile on her face. Oh, by the sweet roots of mother's nature, Quiss was right. Oh, I can't wait to see what you have in store for me. 
The woman laughed, and Delta felt herself smiling back as Swan slowly approached the tunnel. Oh, hello there, my good goblin. The woman greeted, and Swan cleared his throat and nodded. Master, welcome guest to dungeon, he said without Delta having to tell him to do so. He was improving. He seemed to swat at something like a fly that Delta couldn't see. The woman peered at him. Dearie, if it's bothering you, just tell the dungeon to turn it off. I meet a talkative ant once who had a life of me, couldn't stop playing with fire. He had the same problem. A hobby is a hobby, not a life commitment. She laughed as Swa and the old lady friend who had been around since forever. Delta looked at Swa with confusion. Turn what off? She asked and knew might be handy right now. Koi growled. Box wants me to evolve, he admitted, and Delta blinked, and then smiled as the woman waited patiently. That's great, right? She tilted her head, and the goblin tapped the ground with his staff. I don't want to be a diplomat, he mumbled, and Delta took a moment to piece it together. It was odd that her menus were unlocked, but Swaz wasn't. That stank of potential game-breaking, for Delta who moved on quickly. Her goblin had unlocked a special evolution that wasn't in her menus. Delta could only guess that it was due to all the talking that she was making the goblin do. A diplomat goblin sounded handy, and a swa became one. Then she could get one whenever she needed it. And it was assumed to be free. So, all in all, it was a opportunity, and only an idiot would pass it up. Delta smiled. I deny you that evolution, she said, and swa shivered, looking around as if looking for a ghost. Swa was a monster, a her defender and her voice to the people, but most importantly he was a friend. Delta would sooner eat nothing but mushrooms than forcing her monster to do something that they detested. Delta didn't want to be a murdering dungeon, so her monsters shouldn't have to be something that they didn't want to either. It was a childish logic, and Delta didn't care. Swa hadn't let her down so far, so why mess with what worked? just to fill up the menu or grab a small advantage. Master, thank you, Swa whispered, and the woman looked off as she spoke. This dungeon is truly exceptional. I have forgotten my manners. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Harley Dabagast, wife, mother, gardener, good neighbor, lover of life, and, less impressively, an ex arch of the Bloodthorn Forest. Please allow me to enter your dungeon. The woman did a formal curtsy with her white apron and messy bun making image more. Real rather than silly. I, yes, I would love a guest. Delta yelped at the woman's eyes sparked with a green glow for a moment. It didn't seem like a threatening gesture, but one of assurance and promise. Delta whispered what to say next. Master says, Miss Dabba, 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 Gasp. Swa stumbled over the long word. More nervous than unsure, then Mrs. Dabblegast bent down and shook the goblin's clawed hand. Call me Holly, or my friends do, or at least I want them to. She joked, and Delta looked at it with amazement as the dried flower in Holly's hand seemed to ripple and flush with life, looking like it had just been picked off the ground. She slid the flower behind Swa's ear and nodded seriously. Dungeon called Delta, let me enjoy this quiet. I bring tribute, but I shall wait to give them so that you may take them and absorb them just as I leave. No good leaving a tribute on the floor. Hmm, dearie, you need an offering table. All the good dungeons have them. Ollie seemed to find good news in every shortcoming. Delta loved it. Chris was running. He breathed hard as he looked at his face was enough to send people scattering out of his way. Under both arms he held a hob and a gob, and their slow run was only going to be damned quiss. Mrs. Dabagost was in the dungeon. The thought repeated itself in his head as flames leaked from his nostrils. The damned woman was going to see those mushrooms, those spiteful spitting mushrooms, and she was going to bring them back here and make him look for something in her garden again. Mrs. Dabagost only needed to see the creature, study it, to make her own version. Quiss saw Rudy ahead and the woman looked ready to stop and talk. No time. He put his foot down and the earth under his feet shot up and he sent Rudy into the air where Quiss caught her with the aid of a wind spell and some luck. Quiss was three seconds away from sending Rudy into the garbage can, but thankfully she landed on his back. Quiss, what the f- She was cut off as she looked down. Oh, hey guys. You're Delta's gobs, she said, conversationally. 
It was to Chris's shame that this was not the first time he had kidnapped Rudy due to an emergency. The goblins were new, however. Deb gasped, Dungeon. Chris shouted, and Rudy pushed off his back and began to outpace him down the road. Holy freaking damn! Move your blonde butt! The woman is going to turn my fishing spot into some snapdragon howl, Rudy said with horror. Chris thought of getting Mrs. Tabagost's husband, but decided the man would be too busy running the tea shop. Besides, the man doted on his wife so much that he wouldn't be able to do more than give her a wry look and a shrug at Quiss. Love is the useless of the art of war. Quiss pounded on the ground harder as he left the village behind. His mind chimed about the Moon Clan, a long-existing group of mages that used the emotion of love and other forms, as energy for their eye-melting beam attacks. Effective, but Quiss would sooner throw himself into Delta's mud than watch the same naked magical dress-up sequence five times in a row and listen to the religious speeches on love. Thankfully, sadly, the clan had been attacked by a rabbit demon rabbits that dug holes through their most sacred text and a few years back. They never could function quite the same after that. Who needed love when one had beer? A bed and fire spells to practice and Rudy to annoy. Life was perfect. Well, not perfect, but it wasn't something Chris found repulsive. Then came Delta, and so far, there had been a lot of problems Chris couldn't set on fire. Mostly due to guilt as Delta badgered him for the rights of innocent questions of this world. Now, Mrs. Holly Cursed Thorn Dabagost was going to do a little visit. Chris wondered how this had all gone so rightly wrong. End of chapter. There is no epic lucia, only puns. Chapter 23. Nature vs. Nurture. Dalton thought Mrs. Demogast was a little odd. The way that she hummed at the spiders and smiled at the webs. The way she enjoyed the pond room with almost no words. The lack of judgment that she had for the mud room, despite the fact that she knew already which platforms was a trap and which were logs would swing out from. And then she saw the grove. Oh, Delta, sweetie, this is wonderful. Such a rich and plump soil. The right moisture. Oh, being a dungeon, it must be so lovely to control every factor. Mrs. Tabagost said with an odd look. Delta blushed at the compliment, and she didn't want to tell Mrs. Tabagost her first reaction to unlocking the mushroom grove. It just didn't seem healthy. Mr. Mushy walked out, and Mrs. Tabagost seemed quite pleased by the sight. Mr. Mushy, who was also rather pleased to see Mrs. Tabagost, in return. Delta watched as the woman's hands touched Mr. Mushy, and the feeling washed over her. It felt invasive and warm, like a warm hand in the night Delta hadn't been expecting to feel. Nature's cry too high to resist. No, Delta said in shock. She waited, but no other menu appeared. I see. A clever creature. I see how it is used to have poison sex. Hmm. It's end-like. A mind attached to a plant. Mrs. Demogost hummed, and the grove seemed to perk up at her voice. In her hands was a dying lumen mushroom and one of the gut rot ones. Master says that she made them from the small mushroom spitters. Swa added and Mrs. Tabagost nodded as if this was expected. I did sense the feeling of a second evolution. I would say that it was at least a class two threat. A very good job for a little level one dungeon. She smiled at a word and made Delta's smile grow. Th thank you. Um, class? She asked and Mrs. Dabagos nodded and Swa repeated the question. Monsters, humans, have a bad habit of sorting things, you see. We sort our clothes, our food, and our fellow humans and monsters. A class 1 would be a wonderful goblin. A class 10 would be a demigod of the forest about to show some woodcutters why insects are nature's cleanup crew. Mrs. Dabagos smiled softly. Delta imagined and tried to guess what her duck was at. One? Was it based on killing power? Swa repeated a question and Mrs. Dabagos chuckled as she moved through the grove, examining things as she went. No, it is far too easy to place things with power at top. It is more fluid. A lesser demon with the power to inflict paranoia on the community may have a higher rank than a demon that would just kill them all. In all honesty, based more on the ability to kill them. A feeling or a plague has no sword but may clash against, and a god may have no heart to stab. A curse may take too much to end. 
she said quietly and then looked down at the ground. I think that in the end humans are class 15. We are a greater danger than any dungeon or demon. To you, to us, to the world. In this world, I can no longer see why we exist, and I wonder if such an answer exists. Mrs. Davagost said blankly, then after a moment smiled brightly. But I think we make great pastries, and I shouldn't ramble. It's very rude, she laughed, and then she, her eyes lit up as she spotted the only real plant in the grove. Delta dear, a wyam sapling, you cheeky girl. Mrs. Davagar smiled with true delight. The plump woman walked over and began to trace a finger over the plant. A wyam tree is a story of hope, did you know that? She asked aloud and Swa repeated her as she shaking his head. Mrs. Davagar smoothed the soil out a tad. A woman who was wed to a tyrant ran away with her lover, and he promised that he would return as if he was to kill the tyrant, so the woman may be free. She never gave up hope or despaired in the nights that passed. She waited so long, she turned into a tree. To this day, she waits for him. Mrs. Tabergast recalled, and Delta wasn't sure what that story could be hopeful. Mrs. Tabergast chuckled. Many see it as a tale of sorrow, but I like the woman's wisdom. If you had to pass the time, become a tree. One could debate, since no wire acorns exist anywhere else, that the true tree exists in a forest of myth. I have looked and never found it, but I could never get an acorn to grow in my garden. I wonder how you did it. She mused and doubt appeared down at the rather normal-looking plot. Master said it would just took it and grew. Swan repeated her words, and Mrs. Tabergast nodded. Dungeons can be such wonderful places, such sights, ideas, and life-changing views. I have seen the halls of metal, seas of gold, stars born underground. She said gently, and then put a hand on her cheek as if she said, I have seen horrors, dungeons that made every level a mockery of a human, plants that burn and scream. Dalt, my dear, you are truly a lovely creature, I hope. No, I know that you will be someone to impress me. Life is a gift in this dungeon. Your kindness is a pleasure. Mrs. Dabagast sniffed, and Delta looked a little stunned as the woman stroked the wine sapling. How can you see us humans and choose to prevent us? I cannot thank you enough. The woman said with a thick voice as she stood. Humans are great. They keep making me happy and they keep talking to me. I really like people. Swan repeated her words again and Mrs. Tabergast eyed the dungeon ahead and turned back. Allow me to sound like a woman who talks too much for a moment. You are a seed that is only learning. Humans are not the great for the long run. If the numbers spoke of in overall and were really a race that you want to know, some, Durance for example, hold some very lovely people. And I would come back soon. I'll make sure to keep this joy, if only for a little longer. Mrs. Damagos promised, and Delta felt uneasy. Who would, and what kind of people would be bad? She asked, and Mrs. Davagos looked like she was thinking for a moment. If someone ever tells you that they are from the Benor industry, then you should kill them. Mrs. Davagos said bluntly, and walked down the hall and over the mudroom. Who are they? Dalton needed to know, and the woman slowly neared the pond, her face holding onto her long curls. Dungeon growers, mad people who think that they have a divine right to make you into whatever they want. You, perhaps it is too soon, but if you do absorb too much of something, you will be forced to take in its aspect, Mrs. Damagost admitted with a dark tone. Delta froze. Mushrooms. The word hit her hard and fell silent. She had no control over the appearance of things, and if someone had, for example, made her eat nothing but dead bodies. Delta pushed that thought away as the woman left the spider room. Control your land, dig it deep and claim this world as yours. Your wit as well as your power will prevent these beasts from making you into their image. Mrs. Damagos smiled and left her basket on the ground. My gift, it was a lovely tour, my dear. She laughed and left, her frame vanishing beyond the white barrier. Delta wondered if the woman had intended for her words to make Delta uneasy. They had, and Delta looked at the bare open gap and let the deep sigh. She had designed this place to be open, friendly, and safe. And the idea that people would force her to become some uh, idea made Delta uneasy and a little scared of the open door. 
Nu appeared and started listing the things as Delta stared at the barrier. Rose seeds absorbed, glow moss absorbed, lumen mushrooms cost one less mana, lumen mushrooms now cost one mana in the grove and cannot grow any lower, spotted cap mushrooms absorbed, maldiol fern absorbed, minor silver leaf absorbed, herbology and its root absorbed, all plants purchases have been reduced by one. Delta eyed the list and then took a deep breath. Mrs. Stamagost's words had been somewhat dark, but the woman seemed to care and Delta clasped her hands together towards the barrier. Thank you for your tribute and the warning. She bowed her head and earnestly and then swallowed hard and straightened up. I won't give up my joy, she promised, recalling the woman's words. The pain and that had been briefly shown on the woman of Mrs. Dabagost, lowering her guard. Nu, why did your book give me an upgrade? She asked seriously. The book contains the proper manner of maintaining and helping common plants. It'll take effort to create a perfect environment for plants, and thus take less manner. I see the book is a very well written and has a great deal of facts for this menu to take advantage of. But Rudy's diary, she trailed off and no chimed. Diary is damaged and ruined. It'll take 5 TP to restore it. Delta blinked and then smiled and she giggled. Nu, you are the best. We need to go do that right now. Delta hummed and it hit the confirm button. The menu screen flickered. Ruly Darkness Bane's diary has been restored. All monsters that use Inner Soul Willpower will have its upgrade and mana cost reduced by 5. Th that's good? Delta tried. The words sounded confused and Nu made a no twang sound. I would expect so. It has several keywords of importance to you. I expect that the latter is more due to your friendship with Rudy than any logical reason. Con lie, I kinda want to give Rudy her diary back and make me appear more friendly, Delta Grin. Nu suddenly glowed. Nu, Delta turned and faced the screen fully as the words formed. Due to inspiration of Dio and Rudy's diary, the final form of the Thug Goblin has been unlocked. Thug goblins may become fighter goblins. Goblin final form is naturally for Thug Goblin 2. Fighter goblins, a goblin who uses its fists at devastating damage and has a very good reaction time, likely to do silly challenges that may or may not make this menu sigh. 30 mana and 10 DP. No, I can unlock evolution paths. She asked oddly and noon made an error noise. I guess so? Wow, great wisdom. Delta, teased in the menu, riffled. I am only modestly smarter than the dungeon core. I will improve. Delta spluttered and waved her hand in the air. Did you just mock me? She demanded and the menu made a sound of bells tinkling. It faded without a word and Delta was confident that she just got laughed at it. Rumbling, she turned to her other two menus and examined them. It's 86 mana and 92 DP. Delta rubbed her hands and wondered what she would do. Her eyes were one of the new gains and smiled. Ruly grumbled as Mrs. Davagast waved at them. Chris was escorting her back to the village like the gentleman Mr. Davagast knew him to be. Ruly was sure that the woman was enjoying seeing Chris's face twitch. The goblins at her side walked and grew as power flowed in through them. Contracted monsters were always cooler than home turf, and it wasn't much something that the dungeon gave them, but rather a perk of the contract itself. Entering, Ruli eyed the entrance chamber and the door in front of her. Delsa had been busy, and it was also brighter, much brighter, than Ruli's eyes remembered. Looking up, Ruli spotted what she thought was stars. And it took a second for Ruli to see that it was actually tiny growths of white moss that glowed along the dungeon ceiling. This first tunnel alone mimicked the starry sky so well that Ruli momentarily questioned what she was still in a cave not some trench in the wide open sky above her. It was pretty and Ruli followed it, and the feeling of the dungeon mixing with his soothing sight made Ruli's nerves confused. Danger or not? Ruli looked into the spider room and saw more moss. The webs twinkling and Ruli watched as the room looked like some silver winter wonderland as the light above reflected off the tiny beads. It was. Ruli took a breath and tried to keep the lid on a smile. She rushed through the open doors and into the pond room. It was, Ruli laughed, as the water only made the moss glow more pretty and it reflected the light perfectly. Ruli sat down and then lay down on her back. You know, Delta, I am not one for pretty words, but you really made this place into something. 
Brody praised, and the empty room was a warm breeze, blew through the room as the black duck on the far side cleaned its feathers. That was when the fish leapt out of the water and its scales gleamed silver, the glow moss making it sparkle. Rudy sat up with a mouth open. Well, was that a metal fish? Rudy squeaked and crawled towards the water edge. She could see nothing but odd shapes, but her heart beat wildly. A real prize. A challenge. Rudy stood and roared at the starry ceiling in acceptance. Delta just smiled and reread the menu. Deal tail fish, an upgraded version of the common white tail fish. Future coating the scales in a low grade steel, the fish can deal damage as if used as a weapon. Delicious meat is inside for whomever manages to descale it. Type unique evolution, only one may exist per pond. Rudy's quick departure made her laugh. Delta was sure that the woman would be back soon with her pole. Delta would be right. Delta would also be greatly underestimating how much attention this one fish would get. In the end, Delta would regret this on many leagues of water. But she would also love it in many, many more ways. End of chapter. There is no epic Lucia, only puns. Chapter 24. Unruly. Delta hummed as she waited for the return of Ruli. The moss really was a nice touch. Her once drab tunnels now felt really pretty. Delta had only left the mudroom and the bathroom untouched. Delta felt that the mudroom was too exciting for the moss twinkling above and Fran requested he keep his ceiling dark. Delta wondered if the goblin would like something more interesting. Some statues, some thorns around the edge of the room. She would have to ask him soon, but first she sent Hob and Gob back to gather more things as they seemed eager to get back to work for her. Delta was pleased that they were happy to work so much. She eyed Waddles who slapped on the steel tail fish back into the water as it tried to playfully smack Waddles. The duck seemed happy in its alcove, using dried out tangle weeds as bedding, and she didn't seem to want anything, or if it did, it wasn't being too obvious about it. The pond ripples and Delta pulled our thought out of the heel of her head about the fishing pole. One could say she almost fished it out of her mind. Delta snorted and spoke aloud to New. Can we make fishing rods or poles? She asked and New took a moment to think. Hmm. Not the standard of actually taking any pressure. This menu lacks the method of making a proper rod or how to use what materials we have as a line. Silverweb may work, but I do not know how hooks, mules, lures, bait, and we need a template to work on. I need to learn from watching your creation breaking over and over. I doubt you would have the manner to waste so easily. New was right. After the moss she had finished the fish upgrade, she had dropped from 86 down to 26 mana. Not a huge problem since Rudy had been back soon, and her presence in the dungeon would replenish that long with what Hob and Gob would bring back. Still, she had 26 mana to use. Delta pondered what to do since her knowledge on fishing was rather lacking, and she didn't want to murder anyone in simple act of getting it easy. After all, she was a passe fish. Delta left the pond room trying to contain her laughter as she wiped imaginary tears away. She passed Soa, who was dripping with mud as he stalked into the pond room with a grumble. Delta smiled and then her mind pointed something out. Delta hadn't told Soa about the steel tail. She turned, but Soa yelped as she was letting out a lot of splash and quacking. Delta backed away and quickly fled down the tunnel before she risked getting involved. She hid in the call room to think of her next plan of action. A rare fish would encourage people to come and spend some time to get it. Free mana and everyone had a good time. So what was her dungeon missing? It had had decent doors, entertainment, Mr. Mushy, Lomos, mushrooms everywhere. A hey, boss. God, she sounded like the first forest dungeon of a video game. Still, sort of the tutorial, but also a part where people could grind. Delta didn't want to be boring forest dungeon. There was always a little maze or a collecting fruit to shrink and grow the plants to get around. Her mushies were big enough, and Delta hesitated and knew that most of her upgrades in her dungeon were nature-based, and Mrs. Damogast had only given her more reason to grow that way. It was really nice of Mrs. Davagost to help her like that, and Delta hoped that she would come back soon. The woman's words were alluring, cheery, but mysterious. 
that are focused on the thought hard. More monsters are an option, but without a way to respawn them. Delta would just worry over them if more spiders came or people who weren't so nice. Delta wasn't holding her breath on being at some magic land of nice people. Delta didn't even know the level of technology in the world. Fire gun, sword and magic. It fell off and Delta wasn't going to risk a poor mushy for another fire gun wielding farmer. So looking at what was left, she looked at her mana purchases. Construction, corridor, 50 feet, 10 mana. Room, 10 length, 15 width, 20 mana. Goblin fire pit, 5 mana. Simple wooden door, 4 mana. Solid wooden door, 7 mana. Monsters, goblins, chosen beginner monster, 10 mana, come equipped with stone bags. Goblin thug, 17 mana. Goblin archer, 17 mana. Goblin apprentice, 17 mana. Mushy spitters, 13 mana. Myconid, 27 mana. Greater mushroom, 27 mana. Critters, common silver spinner spider, 7 dp, and a simple black spider with a white line. Created 5 spiders per summon. These little creatures can add atmosphere and some free decorations to your dungeon. As basic creatures, they cannot evolve unless some unique elements of being absorbed by the dungeon. White tail fish, 2 mana. Steel tail fish, 10 mana. Made with cheap steel scales and tastes good. 1 per pond. Crayfish, 4 mana. Yellow belly cod, 4 mana. Traps. Low grade pitfall, 5 mana. Weak tripwire, 3 mana. Sticky floor panel, 5 mana. Delta whistled at the list. How much this one's tiny list had grown. And did how scary that this list was still a tiny microorganism compared to some dungeons out there. Well, one step at a time. Epic dungeons didn't form in a day. Especially when they had sworn of DP filled humans for light snacks. Delta guessed eating the occasional animal like monster wouldn't be too bad. There was no reasoning with them, and what else could she do? Enslave them, banish them, force them to grow from a conscience. Delta didn't know, and until she had some answer, she wasn't going to stress over it. If they ran, Delta would let them go within reason. If they fought the to the death, Delta would deal. It was bad enough that her own spiders would terrify her. Having huge versions come hissing into her dungeon, making Delta feel all too happy to have Mr. Mushy escort them back out. Delta shivered at the memory of the drooling fangs and quickly banished the thought. Back to the manner of the menu, and she had a lot of options but struggling to justify them. She could make loot for her monsters to drop, but that was asking people to shoot you and then painting a giant target on your back. If people thought her monsters gave them amazing things, they would kill them. It was the simple fact of going into a dungeon or being an adventurer. Holding a finger to Swar, she saw a menu appear. Goblin Apprentice Swar. Evolve no paths. Remove from active roster. Become a unique monster. Three of five challenges completed. Assign to a room, issue a command, assign a job. Delta only wanted to see if she could equip her non-contractor monsters with weapons. She wasn't expecting to have her world forcibly expanded. New, I explain this? Delta said in a high voice as the screen appeared. This is not simple. I changed the larger words as best I could. It is really what it says on the screen. Normal summon monsters can evolve. You do know that evolution is, correct? Delta felt her hands twitch as she felt like she needed to strangle the smug screen. Yes, I know what a flipping evolution is. I evolved three goblins and two mushies. Delta huffed as she felt her cheeks grow with embarrassment. Indeed, evolution is simple. Choose a monster and choose a path. If you summon something and do it like that, you can erase it and make the room for more monsters. You may assign a monster to one room so it becomes attached to that room. And you can override a monster's thinking and directly command it to do something. It's not like an avatar, but the monster will simply cease active thought and act like a doll. It cannot carry out the orders of the impossible or beyond its ability. Like speak in perfect replica of your voice or your vocabulary. Assigning a job will have the monster take part in a special room to enhance that room's functionality. If you sign a similar monster to a boss, it'll be a minion for the boss to use in battle, but that depends on the boss and the boss room. 
Delta was speechless. New was just dropping this all like Delta should have known about it. About the secret arcane knowledge, and how summon monsters can do way more than just hit things. Delta took a deep breath and when she finally spoke, her voice was calm. It was very calm. And... Unique monsters? She asked, voice sounding pinched. There was all too much at once. I... Don't understand. I didn't add... Oh... New took a moment to look it over and then ding in surprise. Your monster seems to be breaking from its mold. Hi. Let me look into the information and number. Please hold. New went quiet and Delta frowned. Show me as well. I might as well be able to help or something. Delta offered and New made a soft noise. It's best not to. Your cognitive range is... Delta narrowed her eyes, crossing her arms as her voice took a deep, sharp tone. New, don't call me stupid. She warned and the menu hesitated. Very well. Then Delta's mind exploded. It felt like a fire erupted behind her eyes as she spun. Normal walls of dirt flashing with countless tiny nodes that were all linked together. Glowing lines of blue, red, brown, black, green, and something she had never seen before rushed past. She toppled over as her eyes met a single gut rot mushroom. How could it be just a mushroom? Each cell, lacking any other word for it, was work of pure numbers and illogical reasoning. It was beautiful, and it was horrifying. Parts were simple as one plus one made a number that stretched on forever, but it also didn't. The cap was a working lattice of manner and creation, her manner, her creation. It pulsed at every second of every day or for every aeon. This mushroom would be forever perfect, it was hurting her so bad. Delta wanted to scream, but that was the thought. That thought was a perfectly calculated memory of a normal reaction of being Delta, and it hurt. Then it stopped, and it was a mushroom again. It was just the pest that she had used to seeing it as. Delta curled up for a moment as New appeared. Are you well? I tried to hold back on the heaviest of information. Delta rocked back and forth slightly. N -n New, hi, she hesitated, and the menu turned very soft shade of blue. You are illogical. You do not think like a dungeon. You cannot handle the basic of the basic of the basic thought patterns needed to be a dungeon. But in that illogical mind, there is a great power. Do not think that you are weak. I am sure if you were your dungeon mind, we would still be lacking a boss room. Can you stand? Delta thought about it, a phantom pain of seeing the sheer work behind having the ability to think, and then stood up. Thank you for turning it off. She smiled weakly, and the screen returned to its normal royal blue. I am your man you, your new, as it were, and I am here to help because you are too sad of a case to be left alone. I will study my good name to help you for a little longer. Delta giggled, and slightly pompous words from the menu dinged away. What a good name. I named you. Delta argued, and the no screen appeared, but Delta heard a distant dinging noise that new made when he laughed. Let me know when you know what's up with Swa. Delta said quietly, looking at Swa's menu as the goblin looked nervous at the air. Master, are you hurt? He asked and Delta cleared her throat. My own fault, please don't worry, she said. Voice relaxed now and the pain was fading. She closed the menus, a little wary of the sight of them now, and she decided to have fun with her manner. Taking it so seriously would only drive her back to those numbers and those, uh, not numbers. Delta also didn't want to look at that one command. Issue, command. It translated to Delta as turn your monster into slaves. If they were too stupid or you had no patience, then just hijack their mind and get on with it. It was sickening. It was horrible and Delta tried to look at Swa and imagine doing that to him. Watching those relieved eyes at Delta's apparent good health and how she would feel if they just went dark. The cocky walk and the smile of the real joy as sparks flew out of his staff. Gone like a candle snuffed out in the wind, and Delta shook. It was wrong. It was so wrong. She jumped and New appeared. I can remove it off the list if you wish. The function will remain, but you need not face it every time that you open the monster edit menu. Delta nodded and then felt silly as New didn't react. Please, she agreed, and then before her eyes the menu appeared, and it was gone. No more command option, like a bad dream. New had just made it go away. 
Delta felt her heart stop hurting, and she felt like she could smile again. Hey, New, before you go, how many tunnels can I have? I know rooms are maxed, Delta trailed off, and New flashed once. Double the room number. You may have 16 tunnels. You have 7. You gain a tunnel if you also unlock a special room. You only did have 5 rooms available at the top of your core, but then you unlocked the grove and the pond. 9 more tunnels, and she had 26 mana, which could come about. You can currently make 2 corridors. Delta felt ideas pop into her head, and you vanished, and the guest emotion rolled over her head. Delta turned to see Rudy return with a large rod over her shoulder and a metal case at her side. Delta was speechless as the woman had some sort of abominable duck cap. The jacket was a dozen or so lures attached at the front, and her big, thick green boots that looked like they were made from stomp through a wall zone, not fished peacefully in a cave pond. Her rod glowed, and the hook glowed with a menacing light. Delta felt afraid as Rudy began to laugh. Rudy, the hunter, comes from the hunt of night. She announced, and at her sight, a familiar face appeared. It is I, Dio. I am here on punishment under the service of Ruli. The young boy beamed and Rudy itched her nose. Supposed to make the cut logs and admire nature or some croc, but I need someone to keep the fire going and fetch the drinks from the cooler. Rudy said without shame. Delta smiled hesitantly as Dio pulled out a sack. I brought a tribute for the awesome time that I had. He yelled and Rudy winced as she plugged her ears. She spun on the lad and made him look at her face. Indoor voice, kid, she warned and Dio paused. All right, he said very loudly, and Rooney grimaced as a result. Quieter, she sounded hopeful, and Delta was sure that she was pushing it. I am now whispering, I bet you can't even hear me, he called enthusiastically. Rooney sighed and walked inside towards the pond. Rooney, have you seen the ceiling? It is growing. Dio sounded delighted, and Rooney hid a smile as Dio tried to jump and touch the moss. Delta giggled, and her monsters came running in response to Dio's voice. Thank you for the tribute and happy fishing. She called and both of them paused as they seemed to feel a warm wind of something. Glad you missed me, Rudy mused, and Dio slapped his hand on the wall and slapped it down on the lower part. Dio handshake, we can do it from now on, he promised and Delta laughed so hard that she cried a little. It was like she had friends outside the dungeon, real friends who treated her like a human. Delta walked next to them, pretending that they were all going fishing together. Num, the goblin thug, was waiting for them, and Dio rushed forward to shake its hand, confusing the goblin. Num, why are you here? She asked, and Num puffed out of his chest. Me your mouth, me smash words with ease. He howled, and Dio blinked as the goblin raised its club with some torch. Delta looked around and saw Swa was hiding in the camp, away from Dio. Billy was napping in the grove, storing away atop the big mushroom like some sort of colorblind smurf. It left her with Numb. Well, he may be a bit slow, but at least he wasn't Numb, Skull. Delta snorted, and the Numb guffawed despite not knowing why Delta was laughing. And then Dio laughed because he was just that happy, which made Rudy look at them both with a long face. God, it's Goblin Dio, a match to go with Goblin Kuss. She mumbled, and her eyes lit up, so the pond room came into view. She made some high-pitched noises and pointed a fishing rod at the pond. Tonight, I hunt you, metal fish. Servant, boss man, a elemental soda. She called, and Dio rushed to the metal case with a salute. Num, looking confused, saluted too and followed Dio like a puppy. Delta sat down, head in hand, and she just enjoyed the sight. End of chapter that, my friends, concludes this episode. I hope that you enjoyed. If you wish to support the author of the story, there will be a link to below. If you wish to support this channel, there are multiple ways to do so, which will all also be linked below. But the easiest way would be to subscribe and share my videos as much as possible. And until next time, I hope you all have a good one. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.